right, chapter five review, the Miss Henry version. Uh, I'm going to do her packet, which is four, three sides in length. Uh, so let's do it. Section one, two, and three, four, and five, six. A blank is a set of two or more linear equations in the same variables. That would be a system of equations. Can handle that one. A blank in two variables is an ordered pair that has a solution of each equation in the system. The solution of a linear equation is the point of intersection. A blank in two variables is an ordered pair that is a solution of the equation in the system. What's the answer to that? A solution to the system of equations. <laughs> um, to, to the system. Um, of equations in two variables is an ordered pair that is a solution. You see how that threw me off? The solution, yeah. Boop, boop. Uh, graphing method. All right, so on this test, you will see graphing a bunch of times. You will also see substitution. You will, the way that you'll see it worded on the test is algebraically. So she has you showing substitution and elimination, and it's up to you to decide which method you want to do for the test. We are going to practice both when we get there, but you will definitely be asked to do graphing uh, quite a few times. So, first equation. Solve the system of linear equations by graphing, check your solution. If I have y equals three x minus one, right away I can graph that. My slope is three, my or three over one. My y-intercept is negative one. So if I start at negative one, which is what I'm supposed to do, my slope is three, has me going up one, two, three, over one. One, two, three, over one. And you continue that pattern. Now once you can't go any further, you go down three over one, down three over one. And draw yourself a line. Okay? The second guy, I can't graph right away because it's not y all by itself. So here we have, I see it already, I'm just going to rewrite the equation, 1 half x minus y equals negative 4. Here we have that dreaded negative y, but that's something you're going to have to deal with, so let's just do it. Uh, minus half an x, minus half an x allows me to have negative y all by itself. The way that I want to write this out is negative one half x minus four. Y looks like it's by itself, but it's not. That negative is in the way. So if you want to put a, a one there, you can. And then just divide everything by negative one, divide everything by negative one, divide everything that by negative one. And essentially what that does is flips the sign of what you already had here. Negative one half x becomes positive one half x. Negative four becomes positive four. And now I have something that I can graph. My slope is a half, my y-intercept is four. So if my y-intercept is four, I'm gonna put a dot right there at the four. If my slope is positive one half, that's up and to the right, up one, right two, so there's my answer right there. Up one, right two, up one, right two, and you make as many dots as you can. Down one, left two make as many dots as you can. Draw yourself the straight line. Now remember, my answer is not a graph. My answer is not all this work that I showed. My answer is the point where the lines intersect. And it appears that my point is two, five. So I'm gonna say two, five. Now we are being asked to check. Now checking is optional, it always is. But, you know, we're good people, so we're going to check anyway. The way you check is you take that 2, 5, you substitute it into both equations and make sure it works for both equations. What does that look like? Well, here's the first equation. For the first equation, I have y equals 3x minus 1. If my answer said that I have 2, 5, that means x is 2, y is 5. I'm going to replace that y with 5. I'm going to replace that x with 2. 5 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5, 5 is 5. Check, it works for the first equation. 
I have to make sure it works for both equations. So here's the second equation. I have 1 half x minus y equals negative 4. x is 2, so half of 2 minus y is 5 equals negative 4. Half of 2 is 1. 1 minus 5 does equal negative 4, so negative 4 equals negative 4. Check. It works for both. I did it right. Graphing. Fun. And done. Okay, page two. Uh, problem four. Solve the system of linear equations using a graphing calculator. So, uh, right now I can't do anything with that guy as far as solving. I can't do anything with that guy as far as solving. What I have to do before I can even think about my graphing calculator is make sure both of them are equal to y. So, here's equation number one. Y is not all by itself. I have a negative 1.1x in a way, and I have a negative 5.5 attached to y in the way. So what I'm going to do first is add 1.1x. 5.5, negative 5.5y is going to equal positive 1.1x minus 4.4. Okay. Still not all by itself. I have to divide both sides by negative 5.5, divide by negative 5.5, divided by negative 5.5, cross u out. That becomes negative 1 fifth, because I know fractions. That becomes 4 fifths, because I know fractions. Now, it's a good thing I'm using my graphing calculator, because there's no way I'd want to graph that on a regular coordinate plane without the use of a graphing calculator. So thank you for technology, Texas, because uh, of because of that. Anyway, uh, problem for still second equation. Same exact process. Get rid of the uh, 0.8x minus 0.8x. Cross it out. Drop down the negative 3.2y equals negative 0.8. I'm sure that's a fake name. All right, uh, get y all by itself by dividing negative 3.2, divide, divide everything by negative 3.2, divide everything by... All right, so some uh, internet scammer just called me. So this is, I believe I didn't go any further than this. Dividing everything by negative 3.2 um, is going to leave me with y equals, that becomes one quarter x, that becomes... Three point five. All right. Now my job is to use my calculator to do the rest. So I have y equals negative one divided by five x plus four divided by five. All right. One fourth x plus 3.5. If I hit graph, I get a nice little picture of what I'm going to run into. If I hit second trace, that takes me to calculate, and I'm going to calculate my intersect, 2, 3, 4, 5. You always hit enter, 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 and there's my answer. So as crazy as the original problem was, the answer is not bad. Negative six, positive two is my answer. Negative six, positive two. Noise. Substitution, uh, problem five. Solve the system of linear equations by substitution. Check your equation, solution I mean. Uh, substitution means you're gonna have one of them that's either x equals or y equals. Nope, nope, and nope, nope. So I have to solve one of these for either x or y. Honest to goodness, the easiest one is, since that has an eight in front of it, that has a half in front of it, and that has a four in front of it, solve that x, or solve this first equation for x. So I'm gonna add eight y and add eight y to both sides. x equals eight y plus 16. Now that I have that, I can substitute this into my other equation right there. So I'm going to rewrite the second equation, 1 half, but every time I hit an x, I'm going to say, well, x I know now is 
8y plus 16. So 1 half x, 8y plus 16, plus 4y equals 24. Distributive property, distributive property, 4y plus 8 plus 4y equals 24. I'm going to move that up here. Combine the 4y with that 4y to get 8y plus 8 equals 24. Subtract 8 from both sides. 8y is 16. Divide both sides by 8. Divide both sides by 8. y is 2. Now that I know y is 2, I know I'm halfway done. I need x. I could plug that 2 into y for any of the original equations, or since I need to find x, why don't I just plug it into that equation right there that's already solved for x. So x equals 8 times y, which is now 8 times 2, plus 16, gives me 16 plus 16, which gives me 32. So I get 32, 2. If I wanted to check my solution, I can do it mentally quick. If x is 32, that would be 32. Minus 8 times 2 would be minus 16. 32 minus 16 is 16. 32 is my x. Half of 32 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8. 16 plus 8 is 24. It works. Good job, self. All right, elimination. Uh, I have 8x plus 14y equals 4, negative 6x minus 7y equals negative 10. Let me write the one on top of the other because that's just what I'm used to. The point of elimination is to make sure everything lines up A, and it does, and to see if I were to just straight add these two lines together, would any of my variables eliminate? Well, they don't. However, if I were to take this bottom equation and find a way to change that 7 into a 14 by multiplying it by 2, then I'll be in good shape. So I have 8y plus 14y equals 4, and the bottom equation is going to be 2 times negative 6x, which is negative 12x, 2 times negative 7y, which is negative 14y, and 2 times negative 10, which is negative 20. Add the two equations up. 8 and negative 12x add up to make negative 4x. There it is. Sorry about that. Those cross out, so I would get a 0y. And those combine to make negative 16. Negative 4x equals negative 16. So let me write that out up here. Divide both sides by negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. Cross that out. x equals 4. I need to get y so I could plug y into any of the original equations. I could even plug it into that new equation down there. I think the easiest way to do it is plug it into this equation right here. Less negatives to deal with. So 8 times x, which is now going to be 8 times 4, plus 14y will equal 4. Multiply those out. 32 plus 14y equals 4. Subtract 32 from both sides. Subtract 32 from both sides. 14y will equal negative 28. Divide both sides by 14. y will equal negative 2. x is 4. y is negative 2. x is 4. y is negative 2. <laughs> x is 4, y is negative 2. And you can plug it in and check. I'm not going to, because it's Friday. All right, problem 7, 8, 9. Determine if the system of linear equations has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. You do not need to solve, so I won't. What I will do for each is I'm going to get y all by itself. So if I were to get y all by itself for this guy, I would first subtract 9x from both sides. 11 and the negative 9x don't combine, so I would get 3y equals negative 9x plus 11. Divide everything by 3, divide everything by 3, divide everything by 3. y equals negative 3x plus 11 thirds. 
What a mess. Same thing over here, though. I have to get y all by itself, so I have negative 9 and negative 3 in the way. I'm going to add that 9, add that 9, cross that out. Negative 3y equals negative 11 plus 9, which ends up being negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 3, divide both sides by negative 3, cross u out. y equals 2 thirds. So this one has a slope of negative 3. This one has a slope of invisible 0 which means these guys, since they have different slopes, are going to intersect once and have one solution. <laughs> All right, eight. Oh, look at that, they're already solved for y. y equals 3 quarters x, y equals 3 quarters x. Well, wait a minute, they have the same slope. However, they have different y-intercepts, which means if I were to graph this guy, if that was my coordinate plane, and if I were to go up 7 and draw a line, looks like that, and go down 7 and draw a line, looks like that, I would have parallel lines, which means they'll never intersect, which means no solution. If the slopes are exactly the same, but the y-intercepts are different, I have no solution. Easy. This one looks bad. But look at where the y is. y is on the right, so all I have to do is just flip it, make it look like that. Easy peasy. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. These guys don't combine, so I have negative y equals negative 2x plus 6. There's that dreaded negative y again, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 1, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, cross u out. That gives me y equals 2x minus 6. So I have negative x for slope, negative 1, invisible 1 for a slope, and 2 for a slope. Negative 1, 2 are different slopes again. That is one solution. Remember, if the slopes are different, it's one solution. If the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different, that's no solution. And if everything is exactly the same, that's when we would get infinite solutions. Didn't happen here, though. I used to see a therapist. Maybe I still should. The price of two pears and six apples is $14. The price of three pears and nine apples is $21. Write and solve a system of linear equations to determine the cost of one pear and one apple. All right. I'm going to let pairs be x. I'm going to let apples be y. Two pairs and six apples is $14. Two pairs and six apples is $14. The price of three pairs, 3x, three and nine apples, 9y, is $21. I have a feeling this one's not going to work. It doesn't work. All right, so let's see why. Um, let's just see why. I like having a good time. Why don't I do elimination with this? No, I'm not going to do elimination. Let me do substitution for just to make life easy. Let me do substitution. What I'll do is I will get x all by itself up here. OK, let me rewrite the equation. I want to get x all by itself. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. 6y equals negative 2x plus 14. Ugh. Divide everything by 6, divide everything by 6, divide everything by 6. What that gets me, and I'm going to write it up here, is y equals negative 1 third x plus 7 thirds. Ugh. That's why we have calculators, kids. Calculators, kids. All right, now that was the top equation. I'm going to plug that into the y on the bottom equation. So I'm rewriting the bottom equation, but every time I hit y, which is now, I'm going to make that y negative 1 third x plus 7 thirds equals 21. 3x plus distributed property. 9 times negative a third is negative 3. Don't forget the x. 9 times 7 thirds is 21. You can probably see why this is not going to work, so let's cross it out. So this is one of those things where my variables disappear. And I'm left with a fact. 
21 does equal 21. Now, in a real world problem, what this means is I do not have the adequate information to answer this. I could, I could just make something up and if I were to plug that thing up in here, like if I were to say, uh, this is one and that is two, um, that would work here. If I were to flip things around and maybe say, that is one and this is, if I made that one, this would have to be four. So if I made you one and I made, or if I made you four and I made you one, and I made you four and I made you one, that would make that 12 and 12 plus nine times one is 21. So no matter what I do, it's going to work for both. So this is a bizarre problem where I can't do it. Can't do it. Happens every now and then. Ugh. Happens every now and then where you get a tricky problem that you can't do and this is one of those weird ones. So that's that. What a fun little packet. I had a great time. I bet you if you do this, you're gonna get 100% on that test. A for me, A plus. A for apples. I was gonna say Ayla, but I don't know anybody named Ayla. Bye.